No. We will be the gods we choose to be. Not those who have been. Who I was is not who you be. We must be better. Alright guys, today we are talking about God of War Ragnarok. No, we're not talking about leaks. No, we're not talking about rumors. We are not even talking about new information regarding this game. So you might be asking yourself, well then, why, MBG, are you making another video talking about God of War Ragnarok? Well, I do feel as though there is something important that we have to discuss here, and it's surrounding the general conversation, the general narrative regarding this game. I feel as though this past week has revealed an unfortunate reality. And that reality, from what I can see, is that there is a vocal minority. This is not surprising. This is the 1%, maybe 2% at most, the individuals who are truly toxic, the individuals who are only here to cause chaos and to cause problems and to stress people out and treat them horribly. The rest, well... We are all just looking forward to this game. We are all excited for this game. And I would say at the very worst, which it's really not that bad, it's actually pretty normal, some people are just very eager and a little bit antsy to get more information and learn more about this title because that's just how excited they are for it. But how quickly you begin to see the narrative change because that one or maybe 2% begins to take hold they begin to take over they begin to get the attention that they simply don't deserve and they slowly begin to ruin it for everyone else now anybody who's been following this game for the past week you'll know that it started with some leaks with some rumors which in and of itself not really that big of a deal right it's kind of par for the course i mean no big video game goes through a development cycle without some leaks without some rumors and without, you know, some things happening here and there. But where things really took a turn for the worst is when this vocal minority began to turn people's expectations into an excuse to kind of spew venom towards the development team, towards other fans, towards other people. And they did it in such a way to where it did catch the attention of these developers, of the development team, and of the entire studio and therefore collectively the entire gaming industry. It got so bad, it got to a point where Santa Monica Studio had to actually come out and release a statement where they pretty much said, and this is just summing it up, like we are a group of passionate people, a group of passionate in individuals and developers who are working on this game to try to make it as great as we can, to hopefully live up to the insane expectation that is currently set for this title. And so that automatically is a lot of pressure, but they're just asking for this one or 2% to just stop what they're doing and just treat these human beings with some decency, with some respect. They're really not asking much. In fact, it seems as though that they had to come out and ask for the bare minimum. Now, here is where things really become problematic and why I'm making this video. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if it's only one or two percent of people, then what's the big deal? You know, why is this even a conversation? See, that's the thing. When the perception becomes reality, that's the reality. It doesn't matter at that point. And the perception right now, or at least what the perception has been for the past week and a half or so, is that the God of War fan base is toxic or that the PlayStation fan base is toxic or that the overwhelming majority of these fan bases are toxic and that is not the case. I put out a stream a couple of days ago where I talked about God of War Ragnarok and I talked about everything that was going on just you know kind of having a conversation with my audience and when that stream was finished I noticed that the top comment on that stream was an individual who simply said PlayStation fan base has become really toxic. Now, normally I wouldn't pay much attention to a comment like this, but this turned out to be the most upvoted comment, which means the most amount of people agreed with this comment specifically. And so when I saw this, 
I felt kind of depressed because I simply knew that this is not the truth. This is not the PlayStation community or the God of War community. That's not what they are. They are not toxic. And if they are, again, you're talking about the one to two percent. The people who are just living in extremes and have no regard for how they treat people. And they become more prevalent than they ever should be or have any right to be because of the internet and how easy it is for them to just bother people, to harass people, to treat them poorly. And what I kind of wanted to make clear in this video is that it is important, in my opinion, that anybody who is looking forward to God of War Ragnarok, anybody who is looking forward to what Sony Santa Monica is creating, and you consider yourself a God of War fan, a fan of Sony Santa Monica, a fan of PlayStation, or you know, just a fan of good games in general that you're looking forward to, I think it's really, really important at this moment in time to just make it clear that as a fan, we're just simply excited for the game and we are not going to tolerate the toxicity that comes from, again, these very, these very few individuals that are getting more of a spotlight than they should. The spotlight right now should be shining on the game itself. Maybe the development team who's creating the game. And I feel like at the very worst, the worst thing that I think a developer at Sony Santa Monica or any developer in general should have to deal with is maybe a passionate fan expressing their impatience in a respectful way. Just simply saying that they're really eager to see more of the game and they can't wait and it's driving them a little bit nuts. You know, I feel like this is relatively normal, right? Like, I don't think any developer is going to get upset at a passionate fan who's just super eager to experience what it is they're creating and what they're working on. And that's the thing is when you look around, you'll see that m most people are behaving that way. But all it takes is just one, two, maybe three people to just cross the line, to just be terrible people and do terrible things, say terrible things and... And then suddenly it derails everything. And to me, that's not really what this should be about. It's not what it should be about from a fan's perspective. What this should be about from a fan's perspective is it should be centered around why, like, why are you even excited in the first place? What are we even excited for? You know, and this is where I feel like people kind of lose the forest for the trees where they, they fail to take a step back and realize that this is a video game. And I'm not trying to downplay anything here because video games can have a massive impact on people's lives. We saw that with God of War 2018 and we could see that again with God of War Ragnarok. So I'm not downplaying the importance of video games and the impact they have. But at the same time, video games nor any form of media should be an excuse for people to act just again completely horrible and treat people completely horrible that, that should never be a thing i don't care how impactful a game like god of war is or how important it is to you it it, it will never it will never justify terrible behavior and i thought that the most ironic part about all this is that you know how you know these people who are behaving this way who were kind of harassing developers and, and just being toxic. You know how you know they're not even really God of War fans? If they were, they would have played God of War 2018 and they would have heard the message and received the message loud and clear, which is just be better, right? Be better. Don't be terrible. That's That was the message. You know, be a better person. Try to be a better person at the very least. And that's the ultimate irony here is these people who are doing this, they're trying to represent themselves as if they are the biggest fans, the most passionate fans, and you're not. I'm sorry, you're just not. You're not a passionate fan if you're talking to a developer online and basically 
dumping on them and 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 harassing them and making it sound like you are entitled to some type of oh you better give me the release date or you better give me new information or you better give me a new trailer like what kind of like what what are you doing at that point like seriously you have to take a step back and really ask yourself what are you doing you're you're treating another human being terribly because you're not getting exactly what you want from a video game development team at the exact moment you want it that's insane to me that's insane and that is the epitome in my opinion of losing the forest for the trees and failing to see the bigger picture and the bigger picture here and this is where i want to conclude this video because i know it's a little bit ranty but you know i felt like it was worth talking about here the bigger picture it's pretty simple god of war 2018 was a masterpiece game that changed the industry to a certain degree and there are people who look at this game and they they think to themselves you know this is possibly the greatest video game i've ever played i know for a fact that there are people who will turn and if you were to ask them what's your favorite game of all time boom god of war 2018 favorite game of all time right it's a big deal what god of war 2018 achieved and so it's certainly a big deal what's going to happen with god of war ragnarok this is a sequel to one of the biggest and best games ever made, right and so all it boils down to is we should just be excited that this is even a thing guys i'm not saying that oh well we should be excited to pay 70 dollars and give them money for product no no this is where i think people need to kind of again see the bigger picture where people who are working at this studio yes it's a job yes it's a career for them but don't think for one second that there is an, an immense amount of passion poured into projects like this this is what makes them so memorable this is what makes them so so great this is what this is what makes these games kind of rise right it's not just oh it's a product and we're just gonna you know, do what we got to do, clock in, clock out, and uh, and call it a day and collect our paycheck. That's not how this is working. That's not how it works. And I feel like that's kind of obvious. And so I think to kind of have this mentality where it's like, well, I shouldn't be grateful for a game like God of War, and I shouldn't be grateful for this development team or wherever. You don't have to be grateful, but at the very least, you also don't have to be, you know, terrible about it either. But I feel like I just want to end this by by saying because i know i'm really going on now i just want to end this by saying if you consider yourself a fan of god of war of sony santa monica a playstation fan or just a fan of good games in general or just games in general doesn't have to be specific just try to make sure that you're not contributing to the needless and completely unnecessary toxicity that is just so easily spread unfortunately just try to make sure you're not contributing to that not saying that you have to be overly optimistic or force optimism absolutely not there is such a thing in my opinion as toxic optimism as well but when you look at the situation that just went down with god of war ragnarok this past week it became very clear that the narrative was being written by a small group of individuals who garnered way more attention than they should have ever received. And so I'm hoping that going forward, those of us who are looking forward to this game, those of us who consider ourselves God of War fans or PlayStation fans, we can just kind of push that aside, shift the spotlight to where it should be, where it needs to be. And I think that when you look at individuals like Corey Barlog and other developers and Sony Santa Monica as a whole, and what they've been doing on their Twitter accounts this past week, that's pretty much all they've been trying to do is just tell these people to just stop and go away and, and, and focus on what should be focused on right now, right? I think that's what it kind of boils down to. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. It turned out a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but I just wanted to have this discussion because I felt that it was the right time to do so. So leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this. I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say. Leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.